Holy Spirit, rain down on us. Oh, Holy Spirit, rain down on us. Oh, and we praise and lift you higher. Consume us with your Holy Ghost fire. Holy Spirit, oh yes, rain down on us. Oh, Holy Spirit. God bless y'all. It's good to be in the house of God tonight. Amen. Any of you that's been here with us this uh, last few days with Brother Mike Mobley, I'm going to tell you, he has absolutely just uh, shared a powerful word with us. I've been really excited about what God's doing through him, and I, I know that we have absolutely just received. It, it's, a, it's a very refreshing thing to, uh, to hear a man of God um, just, just preach the word. I mean, there's no... There's no um, personality or or ego or whatever he's just bringing the word of god from god and, I, and that that just that that feeds me i don't know about y'all if nobody else been fed i've been fed amen i'm excited about what god has done and i just want to thank him from stony run we want to thank you for the word that you've brought to us you have really richly blessed us and i'm sure tonight will continue in the same way so we're thankful for that tonight so um, let's go ahead and, uh, and go to the Lord in prayer tonight. If you all please stand, we'll go ahead and, uh, and open up in prayer. Uh, Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for this day that you've given us, God. Lord, you're so good to us, God. We thank you. We thank you for your every blessing, Lord. God, you're good to us. And Lord, as we come together tonight, Lord, we just, we, we feel your presence already. Lord, we know that wherever we go, where the people of God go, that you are there, Lord. Lord, you walk with us, God. You hem us in, Lord. Lord, we thank you for that tonight. And God, we pray for those tonight that, uh, that need a special touch, God. Lord, for those that are sick, God, we pray that you would touch their bodies. Lord, we know that you're a God of healing, Lord. Lord, that those that are emotionally unstable, God. Lord, where they just touch them, God. Lord, for those that financially, Lord, that they, they may not even know what they're going to do, God. Lord, I pray that you would open the windows of heaven in their lives, Lord. Lord, we know we serve a God that has a cattle of a thousand hills, Lord. And Lord, you have it all. And God, we just come before you tonight, God, asking that you would continue to minister to us. Lord, you have been so good to us the last few days, God. Lord, that you have been manifest, God. Your spirit has been active and ministering to the church. And God, we thank you for that. Lord, we have soaked you in like dry soil soaks up rain. And God, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. 
So God, as we come together tonight, Lord, we pray that you once again will bless everything that takes place, Lord. Lord, everything that's said, everything that's preached, God. Be with our speaker tonight, Brother Mike, God, that you would just anoint him once again, God. Lord, anoint the singing. And Lord, most of all, touch the hearts of the people. God, you are so good to us, Lord. And Lord, we thank you that you are always faithful. You're always faithful, Lord. We can count on you. So, Lord, we ask you to just be with us tonight and bless us. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated and worship with the choir.
There's a wideness in God's mercy. Y'all stand with us tonight for praise and worship, but help us sing along and worship the Lord tonight.
Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't God good? Amen. Amen. All the time. All the time. Have you come tonight to receive? Amen. Praise God. I hope you've come to receive tonight. Because I can tell you, God always has more than what we can hold. I mean, He's got way more than we could ever hold. Praise God. So we're going to go ahead and take up an offering this evening. I have the ushers come forward. Um, but God is good all the time. And we're so thankful, thankful for Him and His goodness. Father God, we just come before You right now, Lord, thanking You for Your goodness in our lives, Lord. Lord, for Your provision. Lord, every good and perfect gift comes from Your divine hand. And Lord, we know that. We thank You for it. So God, as we take up this offering this evening, Lord, we pray that You would bless the gift and the giver, Lord. Lord, we know Your abundant blessing is upon us at all times. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping So you cleaned me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell thought I was worth saving. Sing it with me, come on. So you came to change my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to my Lord. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. So I could be whole. So I could tell change my life and I will praise you oh I worship you because I am free because I am whole and I can tell everyone I know you thought I was worth saving did he think you were worth saving so he came and changed your life you thought I was worth keeping so you cleaned me up inside, you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life, so I could be free, so I could be whole, so I could tell everyone I know. You thought I was worth saving, so you came and changed my life, you thought I was worth keeping. So you clean me up inside, you thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life, so I could be so I could be whole, and I could tell everyone I know. Sing hallelujah. Because I am free, because I am whole, I will tell everyone I know, I am free, oh I'm free, Lord, I thank you Jesus, Lord, I am free. Because of you, Lord, I am free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
You thought I was worth saving So you came and changed my life You thought I was worth keeping, Lord Clean me up inside You thought I was to die for So you sacrificed your life So I could be free So I could be whole So I could tell Jesus, you came and changed my life. You thought I was worth keeping. So you cleaned me up inside. You thought I was to die for. So you sacrificed your life. So I could be free. I could be whole. I could tell everyone I know. I God, oh, you love me enough, Lord, to forgive me, Father, oh, Jesus, I am free, hallelujah, hallelujah. you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we do thank you, Lord, tonight for your presence, Lord. It is already strong, Lord God, in the house, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Father, for this opportunity, Father, to be able to stand in the presence of the Almighty God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that we can lay everything down at your feet tonight, Lord, and come and worship you, Lord. Lord, we cast all of our cares upon you tonight because you care for us, Lord. Lord, I pray, Father God, as we dive into your word tonight, I just ask for your anointing and your power upon the proclamation of your holy word. For it is not the words of man, but it is the word of the living God. And holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And I pray that your precious Holy Spirit move us tonight, Lord, in a mighty way. We ask for your Spirit to come and fill this house tonight. Precious Holy Spirit, move upon your people, your sheep, those of your pastor, Lord. And Lord, you know every need that is here tonight. And you're here to meet that need according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And Father, you will be glorified and magnified through it all, Lord. Because that's what we're here for tonight. We are here to lift up your name, Lord. We are here to experience you anew and fresh, Lord God. 
Lord, we've been out in the filth of this world today, Father God. And Father, we need refreshing. And Lord, I pray for the refreshing of your precious Holy Spirit to breathe upon us tonight in a mighty way, Father. And Lord, we do praise you and thank you for everything. It's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Have you slayed some Goliaths? Have you been lifted up? Lifted up the head of the giant? You know what kind of weapons you need for your warfare, don't you? Amen. Amen. Those spiritual weapons. We can't use fleshly weapons, can we? Man-made weapons. But we have to use those spiritual weapons that the book of Ephesians chapter 6 tells us about. Are you ready for the new thing that God's going to do in your midst, Stony Run? Are you ready for that new thing that he spoke last night to you? Behold, I am doing a new thing. Shall you not know it? Shall it not spring forth? Because you're going in that deeper water, aren't you? Amen. Amen. Got to go in that deeper water that we talked about. You got to get in that river. You got to swim in that, that river, that deep water. We've got to go out to where the hurting are, to where the needy are. Those that are bound by addictions, we've got to go out and reach them and fill the house of God. Uh, tonight we're going to, I told Pastor Rick, I said, you probably don't know what this is. He said, uh, picnic table. <laughs> this is a, a bird cage bird trap. It's a bird trap is what it is. And I've got the treadles and everything out there in the car. I just didn't want to, just didn't want to lose them. But uh, way back in the day, my, uh, my granddaddy, this is what he used to catch birds with. Now he, well not this particular one, but one like this. This is how they, they made them back then. And uh, But my daddy, after he retired, he decided he was going to make one. And this is the one that he made. But he carried it over there to my granddaddy. My granddaddy, now, he was, he was hard. His heart was as hard as stone. He was tough as a lighter knot now. And meaner than a rattlesnake. <laughs> he was. And he was full of it now. I tell you, he'd all the time, he was all the time doing some crazy stuff. And uh, I don't know if uh, any of you know... Uh, Margie Tichy, and, uh, but, but her husband and my granddaddy, they were first cousins. And, uh, but anyway, Daddy carried it over there to my granddaddy. He said, uh, he said Daddy said, I made a, a bird trap. He said, it is a bird trap, huh? He said, yeah. He said, uh, it ain't a bird trap. My daddy got mad as fire. He said, yes, it is a bird trap, too. He said, no, it's not, neither. Daddy said, I know it is. Now, it's getting heated now. And they said, no, it ain't. Have you caught a bird in it yet? <laughs> he said, uh, no. He said, well, it ain't a bird trap. So my daddy, he went and he said it and he caught a bird in it. <laughs> he told me it was a bird trap. And, uh, but you know, I have this. How many of you like to watch bluebirds? Huh? They are beautiful, aren't they? Uh, bluebirds are beautiful, and this is a good illustration of, of a bluebird, you know. And uh, 
I know my daddy, he has several blue bird uh, houses, and they'll come and, you know, in and out. Are you sitting out there uh, talking with him? And uh, they're, they're just beautiful, and they're, they're fun to watch. And, uh, but and I'm going to use this illustration tonight. See, uh, see, that trap there is designed to catch a bird. That's what it's for, to catch a bird. Now, you know, the trapper, he'll, the, the fowler, he'll take and set the treadle and everything, and he'll bait it, and, and the bird will go in there and hit that treadle, and Are you free tonight? I don't see any chains on any of you. I don't see nobody in handcuffs in here tonight. <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Everybody looks free. Everybody I see in here looks free. But are you free? Spiritually. Are you like this beautiful bluebird? You know, he had this freedom of flying around, but he got caught in the snare of the fowler. And he's trapped. Like that caged bird. Are you free in the spirit tonight? Do you feel like you are trapped, though? Maybe you feel like you're like this bird that is trapped tonight. And you've been trying to get out, and you've been trying to get out, and you've been trying to break free. You've been trying to cross over into the promises of God. He's given you division. He showed you what you are to do, but you just can't get there. You're trapped. You see, God wants to stir us up tonight. He wants to stir us up in here tonight. You see, because He is preparing a people for His work. I tell you what, you're not here by chance tonight. Amen? God has divinely appointed you at this place, at this time, for a purpose. God is doing a new thing, Stony Run Church. Do you want to be a part of it? Amen. See, because you're here for a reason. He wants you to be free. He doesn't want you to be like this caged bird here. He wants you free. So that you can do the work that He has called you to do. He doesn't want us bound by anything at all. Nothing. And He's going to break chains in here tonight. They're going to fall off. Praise be to God. Hmm. Sister, you ain't going to have to worry. Praise be to Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, don't you worry. A warrior can't be a warrior. He says, I've called you to be a warrior. I've called you to be a warrior. And you stand and you fight that fight you've been fighting. He said you stand and you look and you see the salvation of the Lord. Praise you Jesus. He's no, he knows what you've been asking for. He said you're going to see it. And he said the nice thing about it is oh, you're going to walk right on over There ain't nothing going to hold you back. Praise you, Jesus. See, because there's a stirring that He's doing in us, church. A stirring. Praise you, Jesus. 
Are you ready for God to stir you up tonight? Are you ready? See, because He's handing out gifts tonight. He wants to equip you with the gifting that you need to do the work that He's called you to. He wants to equip you tonight. Do you want to be equipped? Are you willing to say, here I am, Lord, send me. No matter the cost, I'll go. If you would, let's turn over to the book of Timothy. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name. I want to go ahead and tell you something before we get in this message here that I have enjoyed my time here with you. Y'all are, y'all are wonderful people. I love you dearly. You know, you can preach all the messages that you want to preach. And you know what? People forget those messages, no matter how good you may think that they are or how good people tell you that they are. But there's one thing that they will always remember, if you love them or not. That's one thing to remember. And I want to tell you, I got, I got two members of my church right here that I know love me. So they are here tonight to support me. And I tell you, they, and I know they love me. I do. I know that they do. I know my church loves me. And I love my church. Good, good people. But God is doing a mighty work here. He, and in First Timothy, chapter 4, starting in verse 13. Until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to exhortation, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift you have. You know, every believer has a gift. Amen. Every believer has a gift that God has gifted them with. And I'm not talking about a a worldly talent, but I'm talking about a gift from the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. And with that gift, He has empowered us to operate in that gift. Which was given you by prophecy when the council of the elders laid their hands on you. And this is Paul talking to Timothy. And and Paul is telling Timothy here to not neglect this gift that he's been given. It's easy to neglect our gift, isn't it? It is. It's easy to get caught up and the hustle and bustle of this world and, and, uh, and neglect the gift that God's given us. Do you remember whenever you were first saved? Hmm? Do you remember the joy of that salvation? Do you remember you went around and you wanted to tell everybody in the world about Jesus? And you come pretty quick and found out that not everybody wanted to hear about Jesus. <laughs> they didn't want to hear about your experience. You see, we're not to neglect that gift, though. 
But it's a God-given gift, and it's a purpose behind that gift. And that gift is to go and reach lost souls. It's to edify, to build up one another. It's to teach, to preach, to evangelize. You know, we have also the, the wisdom that we are given also. He goes on to tell Paul, he says, you practice these things, immerse yourself in them. Mm. Immerse yourself in the Word of God. Immerse yourself in prayer. Amen. Immerse yourself in worship. So that all may see your progress. So that all may see that you are growing in your faith. Persist in this. We have to be persistent people, don't we? We have to daily put to death our flesh. Daily pick up that cross. Daily keep on plowing in that field. Each and every day. We have to be persistent because we have an enemy that is persistent. That wants to keep us caged up just like this bird in the spirit. See, because if he can get you bound spiritually, then he can get you at bay and keep you from doing God's work. See, he wants to keep you in that cage. But see, God wants to stir you up tonight. Beyond anything that you could ever think or imagine. Because he is able. <laughs> Our God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we could ever think or ask. According to the power that is at work within you. Child of God. You see, because you don't have to stay like that caged bird. Set you free so that you can spread your wings and soar with the eagles. Mm. For by so doing, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Oh, it's important for us to have sound doctrine. Amen. It's important for us to have sound doctrine and, and to Teaching of God's word. Line upon line. Precept upon precept. Here a little. There a little. Amen. Amen. Now let's turn over to 2 Timothy. Chapter 1. And we'll start. Right here in verse 3. I thank God whom I serve, as did my ancestors, with a clear conscience. As I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day, as I remember your tears, I long to see you, that I may be filled with joy. You see, Paul said, tells Timothy here, he says, I remember your tears. He may, you know, you can read... Uh, behind commentators and get different opinions on this, but but maybe, just maybe those tears that Paul is talking about here that took place with Timothy is whenever he was there with the elders. And they were all gathered around him and Paul himself there, you know. And they were laying hands on young Timothy Getting ready to send him out to battle. Amen? Amen. Oh, and then that, that word of, of prophecy come to Timothy through Paul saying, Timothy, the Lord has said, you go and teach the word of God. You be courageous. Ooh. Oh, how we need to be courageous, church. See, because then he goes on down here to tell 
Timothy, and I'm getting ahead of myself, but i got to go right here to it anyway. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear. Maybe as they're standing there praying for Timothy, and Paul, in that word of prophecy, says, God has not given you the spirit of fear, Timothy. He's called you to be courageous. He's called you to go fight the good fight of faith. He has called you and entrusted you with something that is precious to His heart. And it's His living Word. Church. The Word alone is able to save man's soul. Woo! That's power. The spoken Word. God, all He has to do is just speak. And it comes into existence. Now, we don't speak nothing into existence. I'm sorry. God is the only one that has power to speak anything into existence. Now, we pray and we ask for God's will to be done. But only God has the power to speak it. Because whenever He speaks, things come to life, don't they? And also along with that word of prophecy there, he said, Timothy, not only has he not given you spirit of fear, he's called you to be courageous, but he's also given you power. He has given you power. Child of God, he has empowered you For this day, for this time, in this generation, He has empowered you for His purpose. And He's also, along with that power, giving you His love. Hmm. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. Amen. Loving God, loving neighbor, saving souls. Love thy neighbor. You see, the love of God, He gives us that agape love. You see, even husbands are to love their wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself for it. There's no way within our human flesh that we can love like that. It only comes through the power of God, through God's power, through the indwelling presence of Him. But you see, Paul says, Timothy, God has called you to be courageous. God has empowered you. And God has given you His love to go and love those who are going to hate you those who are going to persecute you, those who are going to throw stones at you, those who are going to martyr you. He has given you that love for them. Just as He did for, with Stephen. As Stephen was standing there being stoned, as Paul was standing there watching. And the heavens were open up. And Stephen cried out, Lord, don't lay this to their charge. That's love. Unconditional love. And then he, Paul says, self control. Self control. Amen. That he would give that self control. That we'd be able, able to overcome the lust of this world. Self-control in our over our anger. Verse five here. I am reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. Mm. We've got to pass it on to our children so that they're our children's children and our children's children and their children from generation to generation. Passing on that sincere faith. 
Because if we don't pass it on, this world will try to pass something else off on our children. They will. If we don't teach it at home, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. We have to stand, church. We have got to in this day and time. We let so many things creep into our homes that don't need to be in our homes. Amen. I'm telling you that, that cell phone, you can, I mean, they pull up, our kids pull up anything just like that right there and you don't know it. I'm telling you. Not only kids, grown-ups too. Come on now. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's called pornography, isn't it? Let's call it. But we have to pass on that faith. For this reason, Paul says, I remind you to fan into a flame the gift of God. I like the King James where it says, I stir up the gift of God that's in you. Fan it into a flame, the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. Mm. For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. We do not need to be ashamed of our Lord and Savior. What did He say would happen if we were ashamed of Him? Amen, sister. He said He'd be ashamed of us on that day. Depart from me, you wicked, when I know you not. If there's ever been a time that we need to stand, church, it is now. <laughs> I'm telling you. It is now. Nor of me, his prisoner. But share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. Guess what? You're going to go through some suffering. <laughs> now you're going to go through some suffering. Now I'm not standing here with a hand out for some money. I'm not trying to preach, you know, that, uh, that everything's going to be good as long as you send some tithes this way. <laughs> I'm on now. <laughs> hey, well, let's see. You just celebrated the Reformation, right? Okay. What What was the Catholic Church doing at that time? They were trying to sell salvation, right? That's what they were doing. What? What are people doing? <laughs> Those that preach, oh, yeah, everything's going to be good. All you got to do is just send your money. The Lord going to send a blessing your way. He's going to heal you. He's going to do this. Let me tell you something. I've been to Kenya. I know that ain't going to preach over there. Huh? <laughs> it's nothing but hogwash is all it is. Share in suffering <laughs> for the gospel by the power of God. See, you're going to go through that suffering, but guess what? <laughs> What's going to carry you through it? The power of God will carry you all the way through it. Hey, that's what Paul said. Oh, that I may know him in the power of his resurrection, being made conformable unto his death in the fellowship of his sufferings. Paul knew what it was.
to go through suffering. And I'm telling you, whenever you put on that whole armor of God and you begin to march in the power of the Holy Spirit, whenever you begin to fast and pray and seek His face, and I'm telling you, the devil's going to come after you and he's going to try to knock you off your feet. And yes, there are probably going to be some hard times, but I tell you what, he'll see you all the way through to the end, Jesus Christ will. Amen. He will not fail you. Given to us on the behalf of Christ is not only to believe on Him, but to do what? Suffer for His namesake. Whoo! Suffer for His namesake. Whenever you stand for His name, there's going to be that suffering, child of God. Who saved us and called us to a holy calling. <laughs> the calling that is upon your life is a holy calling. Now you may not stand behind a pulpit. That may not be your calling. But you have a calling within the kingdom of God. And your calling is just as important as the one standing behind the pulpit. Amen. And he has called you with a holy calling. Don't be ashamed. Don't neglect the gift that God has given you. Bring it to your remembrance. <laughs> and guess what? This holy calling is not because of your works. <laughs> Amen. You can't work hard enough to get to heaven. Never, ever. It's not because of your good works, but because of His own purpose. Oh, you have purpose. You have purpose. You have a destiny to fulfill within His kingdom. Not our own destiny because our life is not our own. But we have been bought with a price. In this the precious blood of the Lamb of God, we have been redeemed, redeemed, redeemed. I'm a redeemed child of God. And there is royal blood that runs through my veins. Woo! He said, let the redeemer of the Lord say so. And I say so tonight that I am redeemed by His precious blood. And to just think that on his way to the cross of Calvary, with his face set toward that cross, headed that way, that one would call his name and say, Lord, I stand in need right now. And that he would stop in his tracks and reach out his hand. And touch and heal the sick, the leper. Amen. Those that were deaf, couldn't see. He done that. And guess what? Whenever we call out his name, he stops in his tracks and comes to our side speedily to help us and to empower us. Do you feel like that caged bird tonight? See, because he wants to stir in you. He wants to set you free. See, because that's why he came, because the Spirit of the Lord was upon him. He had anointed him to go preach the gospel to the poor. To go and set the captives free. To heal the sick and the lame. To raise the dead. Oh, he's the same God today. Yesterday and forever, He never changes. He can raise you up out of the chains of darkness and chains of bondage and set you free because whom the Son sets free is free indeed. His own purpose and His grace. His grace is sufficient for anything that we face. Amen. His grace. 
Oh, that amazing grace. How sweet the sound. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Woo! Praise His name tonight. <laughs> Which He gave us in Christ Jesus before the ages began, before you were even born. Before you were even conceived in the womb, He knew that you would be here tonight. Do you know He even had already preordained where you were going to live at? You think you're living where you're living at because you want to? Ah, that's the word. He preordained where you stay. Knew you before you were even born. Before the ages began. It was already set in motion, wasn't it? His redemptive plan was already set in motion. His church was already set in motion. His coming back is already set in motion. But there's a work for us to do. Because you know what? There are so many like this bird outside these walls. That are caged up. That are bound up and they cannot get out. Because they don't know who to call on. And they need to know who to call on. And that's why He is sending His church to go. And tell them out there in the world that there is a Savior who will set them free because I want to tell you what He done for me. You see, the enemy would try to destroy your testimony. Oh, don't you let him destroy your testimony. You got a testimony. Amen. You got a testimony. You got something to tell. Amen. That the Lord saved me. That He set me free. That I'm not bound by anything anymore. I'm not bound by the sin. And He has healed me. And that I have hope. That whenever I leave this body, that there's a better place. That this world is not my home. But you know, for the moment, there's a work for us to do. You know, just what, what was this gift that Timothy received? And let's turn over to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 for a moment. And we're just going to briefly look here at some of these gifts. Verses 1 through 11. Starting in verse 1, it says, Now concerning spiritual gifts... Brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. Or I don't want you to be ignorant. You know, and there's a difference between ignorance and stupid, stupidity. There is. Right. Stupidity is whenever you know to do right and you don't do it. That's being stupid. The ignorance is not knowing. And you do it. So Paul is saying, I don't want you to be ignorant here. Uninformed. I'm telling you here. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. Some of us were led to the pool hall. Some of us were led to the bar, to the juke joint. Huh? I've been there. Yep. Oh, man. <laughs> Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is Lord. 
He is Lord of my life. Is He Lord of your life? Jesus is Lord, isn't He? He's Lord of all. And He's Lord of all or Lord of none in our lives. Hmm? He wants it all. Now, there is varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in every one. So our Heavenly Father empowers every gift in every one of His children. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. It's for the edifying of the body of Christ. Is the reason that He gives out spiritual gifts and to do His will and purpose. For to one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another the ability to distinguish between spirits. To another various kinds of tongues. And to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who apportions to each one individually as he wills. So we see all these spiritual gifts, and there's more that I didn't name, but I just chose these here tonight. And we see that it is one Spirit. One God and Father that empowers us. And He gives out to every believer individually as He wills. I was in a service one night. I'd been a Christian probably about a year and and at the time and and I was really seeking God. I'd been out there in that water, but I wanted to go deeper. Man, I wanted to go deeper. Boy, I had got a taste. And let me tell you something another. Whenever you get a double dose of the Holy Ghost, they ain't nothing at all like Him. Amen. Amen. There's just nothing at all like Him. And boy, I was seeking and I was fasting and I was praying to the Lord. And whenever I went to church that Sunday night at Wallace P.H. Church, I knew that was something going to happen. I come expecting. Amen. I walk in the house of God expecting God to show up for Mike. Amen. Amen. And I got in there and we started the service. Lady stood up. Her church pew stood up, started speaking in tongues. And then she interpreted it. She said, Lord was handing out gifts tonight. He's handing out gifts tonight. The service went on. About Toward the end of the service, the Spirit of the Lord hit me. I mean, he just, it was like I could see him coming at me. Whew. I mean, it was just power up there at the altar praying and down on my knees and, and just, Lord, Lord, I, I just want all of you. I want everything you got for me. And whenever he hit me, there was a, uh, Couple have come, few people had come up there to be prayed, and the pastor was praying for them. And there was this lady; uh, she had glaucoma, and she was going blind. And and uh, she came up there to be be prayed for. And uh, the Lord had told me, whenever the others come, said, "Don't you move? Don't move. You stay right there." Nothing, nothing. They keep on running. Whenever she come up there, he said, "You stand to your feet." Right now. And I stood to my feet, and I want to tell you something, church. The power of God hit me. My feet were, well, that high off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> they were. <laughs> they were. I kid you not, there was so much power running through me. And I reached over there, and I grabbed her by the back of the head like this and took my thumbs and stuck in her eyes like this right here and began to pray. 
And I tell you what, I mean, it just, stuff started running out of her eyes down my arms. I mean, it, I tell you what, that I, they just, they just, you just had to, I looked around and everybody's laid out. I'm telling you, that's just how strong the power of God was in there. Everybody was laid out. You could have dropped a pin in there after I got through praying. Just that much power. And see, it's available for us, for His children. See, like we talked about last night, how deep do you want to go? Do you want to go deeper in those waters? You don't know how much I needed this revival. I can tell you that. Because my church look out whenever I get back Sunday morning. I can tell you that. Well, I tell you what, the Lord has been filling me up this week. And He has had made the opportunity at work that I've been able to get off at lunch and spend time with Him. Amen. And I do thank Him for it. But you see, God wants to empower you tonight. He wants to stir that gift up on the inside of you. How did Timothy receive the gift? The laying on of hands, as we read. The elders, as they gathered around him. Yes, now the Holy Spirit had empowered him. But we also see the laying on of the hands there as they began to pray over him. I mean, we see that throughout the book of Acts where, where they were praying and, and, and the Holy Spirit would come upon them and they would receive the Holy Spirit. We see hands in the Greek, the Greek word is kahar. And it means an, an instrument or, or uh, there's, it means a means or an instrument or a channel. And the Lord said, Mike, he said, the holy consecrated hands of a woman of God or a man of God are the means or the instrument or the channel in which the power and anointing of God flow through. Whenever I have a vessel that is willing, a vessel that has emptied themselves, and I have filled that vessel. Hey, Paul, he walked by people in just his shadow. Amen? Hey, he was full of the Spirit of God, wasn't he? Handkerchiefs. People just touched him and were healed. Oh, we have to be like uh, the man at the gate, beautiful, beautiful. He's standing there begging for alms. Amen. And Peter and John come by and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I say unto you to arise and walk. Amen. Such as I have, such as you have. Amen, child of God. That power is available to you just like it was to the apostles. Our God has not changed. You see, it is a gift that God gives. And the word gift is where we get charisma, charismatic. You know, it's a a favor with which one receives without any merit. Hey, we just read that over there in Timothy, didn't we? It's not by works. It's by His grace that He's given this gift. Without any merit, His own, or and uh, it is grace or gifts denoting extraordinary powers distinguishing certain Christians and enabling them to serve the church of Christ. You see, He wants to empower you tonight to serve Him so that His kingdom will advance, so that He will be glorified and magnified through you and through His church. Amen. 
Oh, praise his name. Hila Mahanda. Kila Sanda Shikala Mahanda. Hila Mahanda Kalahandi. Hada Sanda Kalahandi. Shikala Mahanda. Hariya Sanda. Hila Mahanda Kilahanda. Shika Mahanda. Hariya Sanda. Lord, fill this place with your power right now, Lord God. Fill your people, Lord God, with your power and your anointing. Holy Spirit, move right now. Upon the hearts of those that are willing to receive. Those that are willing to get up out of that cage. And be set free in the spirit. Whoo. He wants living water to flow up out of your belly. A spring flowing up. Hmm. You want the fire of God. Hala shanda kala mahandi, hila sanda kala handa hariya sanda, hila shanda, hila mahanda hariya sanda, hila shanda hala ati, kila mahanda hariya sanda, kila mahanda hariya sanda, kila shanda, hila mahanda hariya sanda, shikala mahanda. He says, my son, my son, you have not even begun to scratch the surface of what I have prepared for you. Within the ministry and the calling that I have placed you. You've been through many trials, many tribulations. He says, but it is for a purpose. And it was for my glory. So that I may be glorified through it. And I have brought you to this place in this time to reach many people for my name. He said, don't you fret. Don't you look to the left nor to the right. He said, you keep right straight on ahead. Keep on plowing in that field. He says, for I am the Lord thy God that holds thy hand in every place that the sole of your foot shall tread. I have given unto thee. Fear not. Fear not. I have given it unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to His name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to Your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise His name. Tell you what, we got something to make the devil want to run. Run, devil, run, devil, run, devil, run. Amen. Amen. What's the name? David Crowder sings that. I got something to make the devil want to run. Ain't that right, brother? Amen. And what's it called? It's called revival. Amen. Praise you, Jesus. Because he is reviving his people. Once again, oh Lord, will you revive your people? Yes, he will revive his people because he is in the midst of them. Woo! Gracious. Praise his name. What are, we do, what are we to do to protect the gift that God has given us? Oh, we got to protect that gift. Mm -hmm. We can't pack, cast our pearls before swine. Oh, amen? We cannot neglect that gift. You see, we have to be reminded... We have to guard that gift. We have to take heed to sound doctrine. And we have to stir that gift up. We have to flame, fan that gift into a flame. Oh, oh, oh. you see, I was out one day and I was in pine straw, you know, and, and uh, pine straw is expensive. You try to make that mess last just as long as it lasts. Amen? Amen. 
So out there, you know, after a while, it lays down, don't it? Just don't look that good. So I was out there with the fluffing it up, you know. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as I was out there in, in the flower bed fluffing up, up that pine straw and stuff, it just hit me all of a sudden. Spirit of God just said, you need to stir up the gift. It's like, mm, that's scripture. What, what, wait a minute now, where's that at? You know, I need to find that. And you know, and that's what he spoke to me. He said, Mike, you need to stir that gift up. See, that, that gift has to be stirred. How be it this kind come not but by fasting and praying. Amen. Has to be stirred up, church. That gift does. We have to fan it into a flame. You know, those little embers we talked about. You know how that God, whenever the tabernacle was, whenever they had put all the sacrifices and 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 put all those sacrifices there and dedicated the tabernacle, how God sent that fire down from heaven and consumed that sacrifice. And then you read over in Chronicles, whenever Solomon got through praying, the end of his prayer, and they had made all the offerings and they were dedicating the temple. How whenever he finished his prayer, that the fire of God came down and consumed that sacrifice. And then the glory of the Lord filled the house. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Ha. May the glory of the Lord fill the house. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. May he fill this church with his glory. That is my prayer for this church. And for all of God's churches. Amen. Amen. All of God's churches. I want to see filled with the glory of God. You see, you have to fan that fire into a flame. You see, he started that initial fire, just like we talked about the other night, and the Holy Spirit, and he comes into your heart. That initial fire started. You remember how you felt? You wanted to go tell everybody, didn't you? The enemy, he come and wanted to try to stomp it out. Stomp it! Like, I just got to get this fire out. It's getting too close to me. You're talking to too many people. Huh? Got to stomp it out. Trying to put it out. Oh, we got to fan it, though. Got to fan it into a flame. Amen. Amen. You know, whenever that charcoal, whenever it gets really hot, it's white, isn't it? It's ready, ready to cook with it then. You see, we got to fan it into a flame. That's what we do to protect that gift that God has given us. I stir it up. We got to fuel it, don't we? For a fire, the burning's got to have fuel on it. We got to fuel that fire. You go down the road and your vehicle quits because you ain't put any fuel in it. <laughs> you ain't gonna get it so far, are you? <laughs> you gonna have to go get some more fuel put in it. Oh, we need some fuel. You need refueling tonight. He's here to refuel you. He's here to set you free. You see, he's, he's ready to take that cage. So you can soar once again. Flying high with him. Oh, on the wings of our Lord and Savior, soaring with the eagles, those who wait upon the Lord shall mount up with wings of eagles. Huh. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Oh, do not grow weary in well-doing, child of God. For in due season, if you faint not, you're going to reap that harvest. So you see, there's some of you, you've been praying for your children. Mm. 
I've been praying for your grandchildren. You're in places that you know that they shouldn't be in. They're doing things that they shouldn't do. You brought them up in church, but they're not in church now. They're out there in the world and they're out there living for the devil. But you've been praying for them and you've been praying for them and they're being like that caged bird locked up. But now the Lord says that you keep praying. Don't you grow weary. You keep fanning that flame. You keep fanning that flame. You keep calling His name. And you're going to see them come into the kingdom because He is going to set them free. Amen. It takes prayer. It takes a man standing in the gap. It takes a woman standing in the gap. It takes that intercessory prayer. Praise God. Because it is prayer that changes. Yes, it's a fact that they're out there in the world. But faith changes fact. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Faith changes fact. That's what he wants to do. You see, because we do not fear. That's how we keep that flame burning. Just as Paul told Timothy, he said, God's not giving you a spirit of fear. It ain't our place to worry. Because a warrior will never be a warrior. In the Bible, I read, let's say, I believe it's 366 times that it is written in the Bible, do not fear. One for every day plus leap year. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Do not fear. My child. Because God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us the power of God. That's how we flame. Bring that, that flame into a burn once again. So it burns hot. It's by his power. And by the love of God. And by self-control. And by the grace of God. His grace is abundant upon us tonight. His grace is sufficient for us tonight. Do you want to be stirred up tonight? If the musicians would come tonight. In Acts chapter 4. Verse 29, read here, starting in verse 29, and now Lord, look upon their threats and grant to your servants to continue to speak your word with all boldness. This is a prayer for you tonight, church. Look upon their threats and grant to your servants, Lord, tonight to continue to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hand to heal. To heal the lame. To heal the sick. To heal those that are bound in the shackles and chains and bondage of sin. And signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. Mm. And signs and wonders be done through his name. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued to speak the word of God with boldness. God wants you to speak the word with boldness. He wants to give you boldness tonight. He doesn't want you bound up in the spirit. He wants to set you free tonight. Praise be to God. Do you want to be free? 
Hallelujah. Come tonight. Come to this altar. Praise you, Jesus, because he's breaking chains tonight. Praise you, Jesus. Sheila Mahanda Hadiya Sanda Hila Handa Kalahandi Shikala Mahanda Sanahandi Hadiya Sanda Kila Mahanda Hadiya Sanda Kila Sanda Hila Mahanda Hadiya Sanda My son, I have raised you up for such a time as this. I have called you to this place at this appointed time. There's been many hurdles that you've had to go across. He said, but I've been with you the whole time. He said, don't you fret. He said, that that which you have been praying and asking for concerning his children and his church that you're going to see it come to pass. He said, you go and you reap that harvest that I have called you to reap. He says, you preach my word, my living word, for my word will speak for itself. And I will give you boldness and I will give you fire yes. from on Hallelujah. heaven yes. I will consume yes. that sacrifice because your Hallelujah. sacrifice is pleasing Hallelujah. unto me yes. I have seen Hallelujah. your labor and it is not in vain my child Hallelujah. and out of your belly yes. shall flow rivers of Hallelujah. living water to speak unto my people yes. to feed those that are hungry to feed those that are thirsty yes. Hila Shanda Kalahanda, Hila Sanda Kalamahanda, Hariya Sanda. Lord, make your minister a flame of fire, Lord. A flame of fire tonight, Lord God. Anointing from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, Lord. That every word, Lord, as he speaks from your word, Father God. Every word against him, Lord, the naysayers be cast down in the name of Jesus. Because, Lord, this is for your glory. It's not to lift up man or make man look good. But, Lord, it is for you to be glorified. Hila Shanda Kalahanda. Hila Sanda. Hila Mahanda Kalahandi. Shikalahanda Sanda Kalahandi. Satan, we bind you right now in the name of Jesus. You are bound. Yes. We come in agreement yes, we as a body of believers yes. tonight. Hallelujah. Run, devil, Hallelujah. run, devil, yes. run, Hallelujah. devil, run. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, glory to your name, Lord. We got praise you, Jesus. I now, Lord God, I'm a sister, Lord God. I think you can go to the way of anger. If you need freedom, saving, he's a prison chicken, Savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. You've been walking the same old road for miles and miles. You've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies. If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside, there's a better life. 
there's a better life in your name. You get lost, he's a way maker. You need freedom, saving. He's a prison shaking savior. Go search for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old flight. We've all run.